everybody and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about the nursing in practice article which is called the 10 top tips on autism friendly consultations it was written by matt treris a autism and neurodiversity specialist it was published on wednesday the 8th of april of this year so i thought i'd print it off and kind of give my opinion after reading the article and then i'll give you my opinion at the end of the video so autism training lead Matt Trey Reese presents effective strategies for supporting autistic people within mainstream healthcare settings. He says these are the tips. Establish a preferred method of communication. We cannot assume that having a verbal interaction is a preferred method of communication or that it is the most effective way of interacting with autistic people. Many autistic people describe having difficulties communicating and interacting with medical professionals, especially when there is time pressure in appointments or they are experiencing high levels of anxiety. If someone has difficulty articulating what they need support with, suggest alternative methods of communication such as written or pictorial rather than verbal. Number two, use clear, concise and precise language. It is important to use clear, concise, plain English when communicating with autistic people. Avoid the use of metaphors, idioms, irony and sarcasm. Say exactly what you mean as people with autism interpret the language literally. Using too much language can be overwhelming for people to process and many find it difficult to retain, retain verbal information. If you are having long conversations, discussing multiple topics or passing on important information, provide a written summary of the conversation with the key points highlighted. Avoid open questions. When assessing the needs of autistic people, avoid open questions. Ask closed, specific questions instead. This can be challenging for professionals as many will have been trained to ask open questions. However, closed process of elimination type questions are much more effective. 4. Allow time to process questions. If there is a delay in response when you have asked an autistic person a question, wait 30 seconds to a minute if they have not responded before saying anything else. Some people experience a processing delay with verbal communication, which can lead to professionals assuming the person is not yet understood. Repeating or changing the question could overload them as they think of the best way to respond. If the question has made sense, the person will probably respond. If you are unsure, ask the person again if they have understood the question. 5. Visual aids and scales can be helpful. If someone is having difficulty articulating the severity of a problem, scales can be helpful. For example, I experience anxiety in social situations. 0 disagree to 10 agree. If someone has difficulty understanding what you are saying or the information you are providing, consider using pictures or diagrams. Many autistic people find it easier to process visual information. Providing written summaries of the outcomes of the appointment can be hugely beneficial to assist with the retention of information. 6. Be aware of diagnostic overshadowing and provide the right mental health support. It is important not to assume that everything a person experiences is simply because they are autistic. Many people do not receive the appropriate support or treatment for comorbid mental health difficulties because professionals misinterpret symptoms as part of their autism. Autism is not a mental health difficulty, but yet there are increased rates of anxiety, depression and suicide within autistic adults who do not have additional learning disabilities compared with the general population. If someone has autism and additional mental health difficulties, it is important to treat the comorbid psychiatric condition, but communicate in an autism-friendly way and structure your services accordingly, adapt therapies that are specially designed for autistic people, consider autism in patients with long-term mental health difficulties when their patient does not respond to treatment for a condition they are already diagnosed with or has adverse reactions to be given antipsychotics. Early developmental history indicates a lifelong problem rather than a late onset. 7. Be aware of sensory differences. While this is not relevant to everyone, many autistic people experience differences across the eight sensory systems within the body. These are visual, which is sight, auditory, which is hearing, olfactory, which is smell, gustatory, which is taste, tactile, which is touch, vestibular, which is balance and movement, proprioceptive, which is body positioning and spatial awareness, intraoceptive, which is internal monitoring of pain, hunger, thirst, 
things like that. People with autism often experience hypersensitivity or hyposensitivity in one or more multiple senses. And if someone experiences differences in multiple senses, they are likely to experience the world from differently to other people. If someone is hypersensitive, they may experience a significant discomfort or overload from sensory input and be, sen- be sensation avoidant. Whereas if they are hyposensitive, they may not be receiving enough sensory support and be sensation seeking. People with hypersensitive tactile or introsensitive systems may have a pain, ha- high pain threshold or find it difficult to identify physical health problems. 8. Be as precise as possible with your timing. Try to give precise or concrete times and avoid vague time scales. Many autistic people have difficulty in predicting future scenarios or if when things will occur which can inc- increase their anxiety significantly. If you have said you will do something at a specific time but can no longer facilitate it, it is important to tell the person for the pre-agreed time, for example, display how late appointments are running in reception or agree a new time with the person in advance. 9. Be aware of the diversity within autism. Many people still have stereotypical ideas about what autism is or how an autistic person may present. There is, however, just as much diversity in autistic people as everyone else within the general population, with the same range of intelligence and abilities as everyone else. Historically, autism has been thought as a predominantly male condition. There has, however, been a significant increase in females seeking and receiving a diagnosis in recent years. Many autistic people have developed sophisticated strategies to mask or camouflage their difficulties which can lead to people not getting their needs met or receiving the right support. However, articulate or intelligent someone may appear to be, never underestimate how much extra processing they are doing to navigate the social interaction. What works for one person may not work for everybody. It is important to ask people what they need individually and encourage them to ask if any adaptions they would need to improve their access to the service. 10. Autism-friendly services benefit everybody. Although autism is complex, many of the adjustments autistic find beneficial are simple and straightforward and can often benefit everyone. Developing clear communication systems, providing structure and service and considering the impact of the sensory environment is just good plain practice. If you embed these strategies into your everyday practice, there will be less need to make specific adaptions for autistic people and everyone will have a better experience when accessing the services. Important points, finally. If you are supporting a person in crisis, the following approaches are most often effective. Demand reduction. Don't overload the personal questions or place demands. Reducing the environmentally arousing stimuli. Consider whether you can reduce the lighting or sound input and be aware the person may not be able to ask you to do this. Awareness of your own non-verbal communication. If you are stressed, your behaviour might escalate the situation. Try to remain calm and composed. Diversionary tactics. Try engaging with the person's interests or switch into a more positive topic. Challenging staff as jumpsons about the individual's control of their behaviour. Unusual or challenging behaviour in a crisis does not mean the person is acting out or is not in control of themselves. So I hope that this article has helped you understand autism a little bit more. And I hope that it's helped you to kind of gain an understanding about me and what I go through just to access a medical service. But I hope that's made some sense for you if you've got any questions for me let me know at the end in the comments section and finally i'm just going to wrap up and give my thoughts about this article so i i totally love this article i think it's very well written with the autistic individuals at the center of our own care the way they suggest ways to improve communication is great they break it down into less anxious chunks of medical information the language is straightforward I think they're trying to find a balance of helping themselves as well as the autistic person such as myself to get a medical appointment. I like the way they've laid out the information so it's easily understood. It's put into more formal and accessible language. I like the fact they seem to have asked autistic people for their input in this article which makes it more valuable and important than ever to get our voices heard in the medical community. I feel it because medical professionals are trying to make things a little bit better, they are trying to understand us and get us help and the right support. I feel that this article is very well beneficial for the autistic community and the disabled community. So yeah, and I feel that this article would help me get a medical appointment. I feel it's gonna give me what I need to seek a medical appointment and to speak to more medical professionals. 
so yeah that's my own input i'm very impressed with this article i will link it in the video description below i hope you like this please like comment share and subscribe for more content and i'll see you next time thanks for watching bye